Hello everybody, Crips here. T uh, today is the uh, a little tips and tricks tutorial. Nothing fancy, but I'm just going to show you guys a couple of little things that might help you use Corel Motion Studio better. So um, let's grab uh, let's grab an object, shall we? Let's grab the uh, cube. All right, now you already know how to move, rotate, and reshape it by using these three little icons here move, rotate, and then reshape my object. Uh, here's your tip number one. Uh, to flick through these easier, just use your hotkey, ASD, ASD. And that just makes it a little bit simpler, especially if you're doing a lot of, uh, oh, you need to move, uh, and then you want to rotate, you need to move again, then you want to rotate. So it just helps you going from rotating it moving your mouse, rotating it, and so forth. Again, hotkeys are very, very useful with any program that you use. Let's reset that to the middle. All right, now, um, your easy palette is where all your cool stuff is. Uh, but the problem also is remembering where all the cool stuff is. You know, uh, like textures and transparencies and lighting, you know, it's you can spend a lot of time flicking through all these categories finding what you're looking for. Uh, so is there an easier way? Well, yes, of course there is. Let's uh, let's find uh, the textures again that I just had. Let's go back to textures and then just hit view thumbnails and that instantly brings up all the textures that you're looking for. This saves you just looking for what you need in the easy palette. Let's um, color it, view thumbnails. So that's your tip number two. That's just a, a neat little shortcut. Camera, view thumbnail. It just allows you to move around the uh, 3D or Motion Studio a lot faster than going, oh no, where, where was that uh, texture again? All right. Also, you probably are aware, but if you're not, don't forget, I uh, mentioned in the last tutorial how important the camera view is. If you need to. Um, if you like the size of the shape that's too small, then don't forget you got the distance on your camera so you can zoom in and out. It doesn't make your object any bigger, it just allows you to look at your object closer up. So that's a handy little tool. All right, let's uh, move along. Now, uh, I did another tutorial uh, called Perspective, and it, it shows you how you can get your text and then create that into perspective and you can do also do that with your objects you can also change the perspective or anything you want I'm going to not use this object I'm going to get rid of this object and I'm going to grab the ball the ball All right, I'm just going to zoom out a bit so it's not so huge alright so uh, what do we do we can add a free form to it and I'm going to change the way this object looks so I'm just going to go in here add plugin and then I'm going to go down into where it says free form and this will open up my free form editor so bam there it is free form editor my right mouse button rotates the object and my left mouse button allows me to pull these nodes to any shape or configuration that I wish to have. All right, I'm just going to reset that. Now also you can add in as many nodes as you wish. So let's say let you want to add in a whole bunch of nodes for whatever reason that you wish to do this and then you can just go ahead and really change the shape of your object. So whatever whatever your, your distorted mind can come up with. Okay, let's reset that. Okay, now uh, I'm just going to go back because here's your tip number two. So when you first launch your freeform editor and you have your objects and you go, well I need to add a note here, I need to add a note here, so let's do that. Need a note, add a note. And then you start working and it's looking the way you wish and then you go, hey, well, no, no, I need to put a note here. So you go right ahead and you add another note. But look what happens. It all goes back into default. It resets itself. So tip number three or two, whatever <laughs> number tip we're on to now, make sure you add in all the nodes before you start changing the shape. Otherwise, you're going to have to do this all over again. And that's not good, right? 
or wireframe is very very important as well because you're going to start pulling your object so far apart that the object itself will start hiding nodes and then you cannot see the nodes because right now there's a couple of nodes inside the object in which I cannot see so I don't know what to do so wireframe and then I can see the nodes there it is he's right there and then I can move it around again so alright so that was your uh, tip number for whatever that was <laughs> just I'm losing it that's what I'm doing I'm losing it all right, let's let's, let's just uh, carry on, shall we? Now, you've also seen another tutorial that I did called uh, Insert Any Graphic That You Wish By Using The Path Editor. Uh, for example, let me just start a new project so we're not going to get confused. If I uh, make a ball or a, an egg or whatever, press OK. Now, I have an object that I wish to use, whatever that object may be as ugly as this one is. Let's go back. Alright, so I've already shown you what you can do and if you haven't, it's really worth it to have a look at the uh, insert graphics because it's really cool. Now, um, the path editor is, has only limit functions but if you want to become more creative, well guess what? Corral Motion Studio 3D works really, really well with Adobe Illustrator. It's actually set up on purpose to work with Adobe Illustrator. So you can import vector files that you have created in Adobe Illustrator. So let's uh, let's go to Adobe Illustrator and let's do something really cheesy. <laughs> let's do something really cheesy. I'm going to create G. It would help if I... I want to use a capital. Why? Why not? Uh, let's just expand that. Now, Illustrator, if you're not aware of it, is just a brilliant, brilliant software. It, it's it's what all the uh, editors, magazine editors use, and a lot of uh, people that do uh, build websites. It's probably the most used software for this. Why? Because it works with vectors and it doesn't work with pixels. So when you see those humongous billboards or a poster 40 foot uh, tall on a side of a building, and believe me, where I live, they do that. Uh, they use vector because it doesn't matter how big they make it, it doesn't lose resolution. <coughs> anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, let's get back into it. I'm just going to have to create outli outlines. We're going to create another object. You're probably asking yourself, what the hell is he doing? I have no idea. Anyway, um, I'm just going to create uh, a hole in my letter G. So there you go, I've created a hole in my letter G. Now, what you do is you go File, Export. You know, uh, I'm just going to go back into 3D because I wish to show you something. If you use this one, Import Graphics. This is what I'm talking about. That three, uh, motion, studio, motion Studio has actually done this on purpose. It's not like, oh, gee, I just found out I can. No, they actually made sure that you can use Adobe Illustrator. If you have a look at the options, basically all of it is from Adobe Illustrator. And hand meta files, window, Windows media files, and these are all created in uh, Illustrator. Okay, so that's what I'm. That's what I meant. I actually had done this on purpose. All right, so um, as you can see, I've already created a G, but I'm going to do this again. Okay, save as EMF, yes. Save, yeah, overwrite it. Let's go into the important meta files. All right, so here it is. There's my G. Now, there it is. So. I have to, well I don't have to, all I've got to do is press OK and there's the G. So I have created an object in Adobe Illustrator and I can import it into Corel Motion Studio. And as you're aware that uh, Adobe Illustrator is such a powerful tool, you can create some really cool stuff. Now why am I doing this? Well, uh, let's just go back into camera, let's zoom in. 
basically I'm going to create a door here and I'm going to open it. What am I talking about? This cheesy little effect here. All right, nothing fancy. How's all this done? Well, for starters, I created the Jeep. That's why I had to cut the hole out. And all I got to do now is create my door. So I'm going to create a door. And there you go. Always try and get your object as close to this as you can in center. The reason is because that's what that represents the access point. Yes, okay. There you go. I'm going to go into my bevel. I'm going to because my door is not so thick. Um, just have a quick look. Alright. Oh god, I'm messing things up here. Alright, so I can add a texture to it. So I'm going to add the texture, view thumbnails, let's grab some bricks, double click. As you can see, the bricks as they come onto my object, uh, they're quite large, so I can resize them as well. Mapping, here it is here, and all I'm going to do is just, I'm going to hold down the shift key because it keeps the aspect ratio, and as you can see now, it's definitely looking like bricks on my letter. Uh, now I'm going to go to my door, I'm also going to create a texture, but uh, what I've done, I have found a photo on internet of a door so I'm gonna here it is the door and voila there's my door I'm just gonna have to resize that slightly move it over doesn't have to be uh, perfect why did you say why are you asking because it's a tutorial that's why I'm just going to resize the door to make, make it a bit more skinnier. Otherwise, I've got a really ugly door. Just a little bit more, folks, and I'm done. Alright, so there's my door. So you can quickly see what I'm going to do. I'm going to slot this door into here. Now, before I do that, Obviously, I want that swinging effect. So I can do two things. I can do, I can go open my attribute uh, plugins again, and I look for something called token rotate, and that gives me the attribute panels, and it allows me to um, do whatever it is. So I change all the settings for this. But if I go to view thumbnails, I'm sure there is something already here. Okay, look here. Uh, is the same effect as a door swinging. So instead of me trying to create all the settings and hope to get it right, I can just double click. Now watch. There's my door opening and closing. And now it's just a matter of uh, getting this shape smaller to fit into this uh, letter G. Now I'm not going to sit there and do that because like I said, I've uh, the end result will be this anyway. As you can see, the little door opens. And all of this is just a matter of uh, resizing it, moving it around, and so forth. And you probably need to use your camera view a lot for this to make sure that everything is in alignment. So there you go, my friends. Um, if I think of anything else, I will put another tutorial together. But in the meantime, I hope uh, this has helped you out moving around your Corral Motion Studio 3D. And as always, thanks for watching.